you want to sit back for this conversation. And I feel it will resonate more uh, with a lot of people today being a Friday, right? It's been a very busy week and Fridays are usually, you know, time we take it easy, ease into the weekend. And now we're discussing tourism. I have personally never met anyone who said, I don't enjoy tourism. By the way, tourism has a wide definition, really. It just means taking time away from work, from home, to relax, go for recreation, and all of that. So yes, indeed, you want to stay back for this conversation. And this is particularly around the linkage between culture, tourism and the creative industry, especially in Nigeria. As you've seen, uh, we'll be speaking with Elsia Grancourt, who's a regional director of the UNWTO, that's the United Nations World Tourism Organization for Africa. She joins us live from Spain on the program uh, this morning. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I see, are you in Good Lagos morning. already? Yes, that's right. I was going to say I'm in Lagos and it's a pleasure to be on your platform once again. Thank oh, you, it's, sir. It's, it's good to have you now in Nigeria. I mean, last we heard you were still in Spain. So uh, we're going to talk about this big conference it's meant to start on the 14th. I know it's a major one, first of its kind, linking tourism and the creative industry and the culture, all of which Nigeria has in abundance. But I'd just like to start off with something uh, which the tourism industry has had to deal with for years now. You know, in the after Aftermath of COVID-19. Uh, I mean, seeing the figures, seeing the industries across the world, uh, how well would you say the industry as a whole has been able to recover from COVID-19? Yes, you you are very right in what you say. I mean, globally, we've all gone through a very tough time with the pandemic COVID-19. All sectors has been affected, and tourism primarily. And I, as we always say, tourism is a sector that is resilient, and we've seen how countries were quick to put in the, the, the measures, especially the health protocols. Um, we were at a point where all borders were closed. But uh, as I said, countries quickly came together and also under the leadership of our Secretary General Zura Pulolikashvili, whereby he brought all the key stakeholders, other UN agencies such as WHO, uh, as well as the private sector stakeholders from the tourism industry, uh, together through a committee to look at ways um, for us to restart the sector and a couple of initiatives was spearheaded by this committee whereby we were able to support member states towards the recovery of their tourism sector and um, there we are uh, after the two years slowly now we see that uh, the, the, the business is picking up you would have followed already that uh, WTM that just closed only two days ago was a resounding success because uh, uh, the, the stakeholders came out and showed that we are ready and open to do business. Right. I, I just want to know, because, I mean, this is a big industry, literally, as I said, I've never met anyone who's not a fan of tourism, relaxation, recreation, and all of that. Is the industry maybe prepared for possibly another pandemic or some sort of disruption? Because I imagine that we've learned some lessons from COVID-19 such that we're able to be better prepared for any disruption in the future? I mean, I don't believe any country was ready for what we went through. But uh, lessons learned, I, I believe there's a lot of lessons learned in how better to prepare ourselves uh, for crises. Uh, a lot of country are now looking at their preparedness plan when it comes to not only natural disasters, but different kinds of, of crises that may be out there. And uh, definitely there would be more challenges that would Will become but i believe that with what we've gone through a lot of countries has picked a lot of uh, what happened and what could happen next and how to better prepare ourselves for any future eventualities but it would be something that is continuously ongoing we always have to try to 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 um, be mindful that uh, for anything that happens we are able to reassemble take stock and move on because uh, now as we speak you know we don't uh, we we are not just coming out of the pandemic we have uh, the the war that is going on uh, in uh, ukraine that is affecting uh, not only that part of the world but it has a ricochet effect 
on the other countries as well because uh, we were getting uh, tourists coming from that side of the world and that also um, we saw a drop because of this so crises after crises uh, what is important is that lessons are learned and uh, we try to rebuild the sector and as I say tourism is a sector that is resilient and the beautiful thing is when you see everybody coming together trying to find the best possible solutions and I mean I, I dare say that the tourism sector is also important for, you know, human well-being, ensuring people have, you know, good psychosocial well. Because, I mean, you've talked about the wars, I mean, countries facing economic crunch and all of that. So people really want to just take a break out of all that pressure and just relax and go for recreation. So let's talk about the Nigerian situation, really. And this global tourism conference holding in Nigeria, linking, you know, our culture, tourism and the creative industry we have one of the biggest in the world and in terms of culture i mean over 300 ethnic uh, you know groups and all of that so talk to us what what is the plan really uh, with this uh, global tourism conference i know nigeria is literally the right place to hold it but what are you planning to bring out from this I totally agree with you and and this conference is very timely very timely why because uh, as you know in 2021 the international year of creative economy for sustainable employ development was declared at the 74th UN NGA and really is to put creative industry as this at the center of the recovery and and what better place to do that in Nigeria because this sector is also very important uh, not only for Nigeria but globally and um, within these uh, two days that we will be here obviously we have a series of activities that will be going on but what is more important is that we're using this platform to showcase not only what Nigeria has to show us in terms of cultural heritage and the creative industries, but also what is out there, uh, especially linking these two very uh, important uh, topic to the tourism industry, because you know that uh, uh, the creative industry leads to the creation of jobs. A lot of jobs is being created from there. And uh, within these two days, we also anticipate to have targeted workshops um, in order to be able to give the right tools uh, and capacitate the key stakeholders within that industry in order to be able to, to better promote uh, their own um, uh, activities, if you want to say, on the ground. We will be looking at things also related to uh, screen tourism, for example, with the support of Net Netflix. But uh, more importantly as well, uh, the topic of uh, the intellectual properties, the rights that the artist receives from the work that they do. So there will be an array of discussions uh, around these topics. But at the same time, we're taking the opportunity to also uh, give uh, some training through the workshops and also we have a hackathon that has been launched by a Nigerian entrepreneur uh, so we will be listening to the the youth coming to pitch their solutions during this platform as well mm. I, I mean and we're partners with you on this one really just to ensure that we tap into that tourism sector well and provide jobs. Lately, we've been seeing the contribution of the creative sector to Nigeria's GDP, and it looks like we can even do way better, which is why this is very important. But I know, I know that you've talked about moving tourism away from exploiting, basically, to, you know, everybody gaining from it. And, and, I, and I heard that all-inclusive packages, for example, you realize that most of the monies generated, about 80%, actually go to, you know, international companies, the airlines, the hotels, and leaving nothing really for the local environment where, I mean, these attractions come from. So really, how can we do better for those who, uh, who have the ideas, those who actually have those locations, the locals, those who are really responsible directly for those attractions such that they are not exploited? Because I think that's a major challenge we have seen. I think, yes, you are, you are very right on, on this, but what is important is for us to continuously be encouraging, and I always say this, we must encourage the visitors that come to our shore to eat local, to wear local, and to buy local, because that is the only way we can allow those local entrepreneurs, those uh, stakeholders, to be able to put at the fore the, the products that they are really 
really uh, working on in order to be able to lead really that to have that trickle down effect that goes down to uh, all the 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 artists the everybody who's contributing towards the the value chain in the tourism industry so there is a strong urge for us to move towards that direction but also to create that environment. So that is why uh, in this uh, conference, we don't have only the, the public sector, but we have the private sector because there needs to be that dialogue between the two, whereby the, the public sector is setting the policy framework. We need also the, the private sector to be there to help to drive this forward. And with this conference, we hope that through these dialogues, some key um, uh, solutions uh, could come out so that there countries could also look at it and also there will be other countries coming to share their best practices we will have the the case studies from countries like um, Tunisia for example uh, you will have countries uh, from Morocco for example coming to share um, the the what they are doing also at the local level South Africa um, and uh, at least to share that uh, best practices that is existing also in their own country when it comes to culture and creative industries. Interesting. I mean, your enthusiasm for this conference is so infectious. Uh, I've been looking at the objectives, some of the objectives that you hope to achieve. Uh, and one of them, looking at it, it says, is to discuss the importance of creating creative ecosystems such as protection of copyrights, in the film industry, heritage sector, arts, media, functional creations, etc. I'm sure that copyright continues to be one of the biggest problems uh, that the creative sector will tell you that they're going through. What are some of the solutions you're hoping will come through? Are there examples of countries you think have really been able to get a hang of this uh, copyright uh, problem and uh, seeing how they can enforce it better you know those, those countries you think that perhaps nigeria can learn even a lot more from absolutely that is why we've uh, brought together all these uh, uh, different uh, stakeholders such as um, uh, wipo is there netflix is there uh, we have so many of uh, the 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 partners that works with us on this and the countries that are coming to share their best practices so that we can see at what level uh, one is in comparison to the other so that they can share and um Obviously, within a conference, we will not have all the solutions, but it's also always good to have this exchange and look at what each other is doing so that at least coming out of this conference, we can see how to move forward best uh, in, this, in, in these uh, situations. But uh, the protection and the rights uh, for the artists, as you say, it still remains a challenge in a lot of countries. And uh, that is why we feel it's important to continue be encouraging them to look at this so that the the artists can get their right their, their their fair share of the work that they produce i also find it very interesting that you talk about uh intangible heritage uh, is it intangible heritage sites or intangible yes intangible, intangible heritage, heritage sites yes. uh you know it, it's interesting that you, you also still call them sites and some of them include the Congolese rumba dance, uh, the Mutia traditional dance of Seychelles, Grand Festival of Tangira in Bolivia, uh, flamenco in Spain, etc. Now, for some of these intangibles, how are you um, hoping that you know people will be able to pass it on from one generation to the other? Um, do you think that they are in any danger of becoming extinct? Absolutely, because um, nowadays when we look at uh, culture is something that we should be preserving. And uh, we have seen recently, you just rightly mentioned, uh, that has been inscribed in, by UNESCO, the intangible heritage, uh, cultural heritage, such as uh, you're not talking just about the hard um, uh, items, but also the different dances, the gastronomy. But we need to be careful because there is the rate of globalization that is happening. Uh, the youth are looking more and more at the new tendencies, but we have a duty to preserve what we have 
inherited. And it's through these to make sure that it can then be handed and passed on to generations after generations. We have a duty to do that right now. And we have to be careful because yes, we need to, to, to catch up with the pace of uh, digitalization that we are moving with, but we also have to uh, put the right framework in order to be able to ensure that what has been there continues to live, but it's by promoting, by safeguarding that we will be able always to have these intangible heritage uh, um, uh, intact and protected so that we can be passed on for generation after generation. And I think more and more countries are moving into that direction in trying to bring more to the fore what are uh, the things that they feel must be protected, but not only at the national level, but at the global and international level. Because when people travel, they travel specifically to, to, to enjoy the experience, first of all, but also to discover the culture, uh, to meet with the people, to savor the gastronomy. And this is one of the key initiatives also of our Secretary General that has pushed us to really put the African gastronomy on the uh, international stage through the gastronomy brochure that we published and we see now more and more countries are really pushing this forward and within this conference there will this is not also an exception because we will have chefs uh, coming internationally as well that will be uh, showcasing the different uh, gastronomies of the continent and all of these are happening on just one day? Is it just the November the 14th or is it for more than that one day? Oh. Oh, we, we, we kick off on the 14th. This is a, an industry that uh, has different facets. So one day would not be enough for us to be able to cover everything. So over three days, we will be here in Lagos to look at all the different activities uh, around the, the, the theme of the conference. So from the 14th to the Fantastic. 16th. Of November 14th to the 16th and it will be happening at the uh, where precisely now at the, at the National Theatre here in Lagos at the National Theatre interesting well we do yes. wish you a very successful conference I'm not certain uh, I do not know if my colleague Kaede has more questions for you uh, but that will be all from Abuja here over now to you Kaede <laughs> Oh, well, it's happening here in Lagos, Malpe. So, yes, Lagos uh, would always have the final say on this. And, yes, Channels Television is an official partner uh, with the UNWTO. So, clearly, uh, we're in this together and we're happy uh, to ensure that we make the best of, you know, the creative industry, the vast culture of Nigeria. And speaking of that, I'd like to ask you two issues as we wind down. Uh, what do you find most interesting about either Nigeria's culture, the creative industry, what would you say is most intriguing, fascinating for you about Nigeria? Everything, everything from, from the gastronomy, from the, the, the fashion, but more importantly, the Nollywood. I mean, nobody doesn't know about Nollywood. Everybody's, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, a big fan of this and, and we're looking forward uh, to be able to, to, to learn a little bit more obviously about this uh, interesting film industry here in Nigeria. But I think there is a, um, a different buzz, uh, if you want to put it this way, when we talk about everything related to culture and creative industries uh, in Nigeria. And that is why I believe also it's fitting that uh, it is uh, hosted here in, in Lagos. And we uh, allow me also sir, to, to say thank you to Channels TV for this collaboration that we have with you. You have been a, a, a great support for us to put forward the work that we do. And we really do appreciate your supporting us on this, uh, on this event. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, let me just give you a little uh, language class here. So in Yoruba, you say Eshe for thank you, uh, Dalu in Igbo language, and Nagode in house language. They all mean thank you. So thank you very much as well for the work you're doing. Uh, I, I know this has been a very interesting period in the world and I'll just like to end on this note. We're counting down uh, to the World Cup and I know the Barcelona Declaration talked about, you know, respecting, you know, the culture of, of whatever nation in terms of tourism and a lot of people will be traveling, especially to Qatar uh, for the World Cup and all of that. And I wonder what is the, perhaps the position of the 
UNWTO on this because it looks like, uh, yes, there's a culture, there's globalization as well, which you talked about. So maybe on a general scale, how are you balancing the local culture and globalization, which looks like it's encroaching on the space of local culture? I think the, the, the key word to your question here is respect. We need to be able to respect, appreciate uh, each other's culture. Um, we might not have the same um, uh, opinions about everything, but if we have uh, um, the, the respect and understanding, I think we can move forward in a, in a better in a better way. So, so for me, this is really the the, the key word: respect. Mm. Again, I'll say Eshe Dalu. And now good day. It's been very interesting speaking with you. Elsha Grand Court is the regional director, UNWTO for Africa. It's going to be very interesting uh, three days, that conference. We'll be there as partners just to ensure that the world gets to see what is going on at that global tourism conference. Again, thank you so much and wish you the very best. Allow me to say Ashe Nagode. <laughs> I hope I got that right. Thank I'm you so much, it. sir. Oh, you did. Thank you so much. All right, uh, very interesting conversation, and of course, the coming days will be interesting. I'd like to encourage you to visit tourist sites in Nigeria. Yes, there are lots of them around your locality, yes, and even beyond. We'll go on a break now, and we'll return, we'll come to you with our final topic of the day. We're not done just yet, so please stay with us. Yeah.